nicest people, our deals are number one. You'll love Dave's, Dave's Soda <laughs> and Bed City. We make shop it for your bed. Fun, 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 fun. We're filming. <laughs> Hey everybody, and welcome to Dave's Pet Show. We are here finally on a sunny day, the, the first one right on a Friday. Beautiful. And uh, I am here with um, uh, a student and a teacher, and they're skipping school today. Uh, you're gonna get detention, and you're gonna get fined. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, you don't have school today, right? No. All right, okay, I forgot, okay. <laughs> so uh, anyway, they are here, because they're, they're doing something that's really cool, and I think I'll let uh, the, the teacher here, Christine, right? Actually, Blake would love to talk Bla about it. No, Blake is going to talk, about, is going to talk it, about it. But I just wanted to say you're related to Diana Crawl. No, are you, are you her sister? I, I, am, I don't Can you know sing a few things? No? No? No. No, all right. Okay. All right, Blake. Be serious. All tell right. us what. Tell us what. I'll hold this. Okay. <laughs> so you, you can uh, tell me what you're doing here, kid. All right. Hi. So um, I'm one of the class officers for Chickabee High School and uh, for the junior class and we're here doing pause for pause and it is a uh, community service project that the junior class puts on and um, all the proceeds and everything that we get donated goes to the TJ O'Connor Animal Shelter so we're just asking people as they walk in and stroll into Dave's um, to give us extra donations of whatever their wish list is and bring it to us and we're going to bring everything that is donated to the TJ O'Connor Shelter. This is all for a really good cause and we're just trying to um, get the word out there because the shelter is really hurting and they need a lot of people and a lot of donations to help them. So we're just trying to spread the word and help them out. So that's very cool. So wh why I like this, all kidding aside, and you, you're a big part of this, is um, I love it when young people donate their time uh, to, right? Right. To, uh, to do things to help out the community and I don't care what it is. And for those of you parents who are watching this as an employer, when a young person comes and fills out an application or, or resume or something and an employer sees that the youngster has done volunteer work, it is a huge deal huge deal. So how did this project get started? Um, well, every year all the classes have to do a community service project for the Pride Week festivities that CHS does. Yep. And freshman year, one of the kids, they just had the idea, let's help out the animals. Um, our health teacher, Mrs. Hill, gave us the idea of calling it Pause for Pause and giving out the wish list rather than asking yep. for money, and it just right. took off from there. Right. Every year they expand it a little, do more weekends, so more right. time, and right. just do some more good for the shelter. And, and uh, how many kids... Hello. Morning. How are you? <laughs> Hello. And uh, welcome to Dave's. <laughs> and how many kids are involved in this? Right now we have overall about 20 kids overall helping between doing the shifts at the store and helping yep. move the stuff, yep. organize it, sort it, catalog it, and bring it over to the shelter. They also sell paw prints at school to their kids, for tw uh, to the students for 25 cents yep. in their pet's name to help raise some yep. money. So between all of that, we got about 20, 25 kids helping mm -hmm. out. That's very to cool. Run this and so how much have you raised so far? So far Ball this park. year we have done about $3,000 worth of items, donations, gift cards, and cash. Wow, you know, yeah, so. I, all kidding aside, we have the best cust we have the nicest customers in the world at Dave. People don't just buy a can of food; they buy like a right. whole tray of food and donate the whole mm -hmm. thing. Your right. customers are fantastic. Right, because we train them. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're right, Joe shaking his head. Yes. So um, I want to thank you very much for doing this, and I want you guys to keep up the good work. And again, parents, uh, you know, encourage your kids to do some sort of, right, you're yes. a teacher, you know, oh, yes. some sort of volunteer work because it goes a long way in future years. So thank you very much thank and very congratulations much. and thank you for doing this because this is extra time on your part as well. Thanks for having us. So it's great. So take this thank and get you. back to work. Quit okay. going around. <laughs> thank you. Thank All right, you. so next up, I got Cindy and Cookie are here. Uh, and Cindy, as you know, is the Bark for Life lady and Cookie is the Bark for Life dog. So come in and uh, say a few words. Hello. No, say a few words. A Hi few there. words. Hi there. How are you doing? <laughs> Fine, thank you. So uh, how's things going for the Bark for Life? Currently, we're in first place for Team Cookie. We are? We have $3,750. And what's the goal? The goal is five, five grand, right? 
Yeah, but I think we can do better than that. You I do? We really do. And uh, how much did you raise last year? Last year we raised just short of 6000 Oh. So do we have a, um, do we need a mic on here? Cindy, take a, take a mic. Yeah, Cookie, take a mic. You can, yeah, you could just, uh, are we filming right now? Are we still? <laughs> Uh, it's live TV. <laughs> so, um, have we contacted all the people who donated last year to make sure that they redonate? We did. We've contacted them. We've yeah. done a fundraiser in the store. You want us to shake them down? We want to shake them down. Yeah? <laughs> all right. So, in case anybody missed it, and I know Joe said you still have the graphic, we. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we're batting 100. Right. We still have. Hello, check, test. <laughs> Uh, Joe still has the graphic up there, but tell us again a little yeah. bit about it because some people may have missed Why it. Why don't we hold it this way? Oh! <laughs> this is really, really live. <laughs> Bar for Life is a non-competitive walk that honors canine caregivers. And this event really touched me because, as you know, I had a miscarriage right. this year. And after that, the dogs are by my side. Right. I mean, you know that. They look right. at you, they know. Right. and Ever since that, I'm That's glued it. to this event. Right. And this is actually the only event that really truly honors canine caregivers. I haven't heard of anything else. Right. Um, and then the, on a side note, it also raises money for cancer. Right. It's a win-win. Right. It Absolutely. really is. Absolutely. So you know what is funny about the, the dogs? Was Cookie more attentive or, because sometimes fem it's weird, females yeah. are more. You know, it happened here yeah. and she snuck outside of the office and found me. Right, that's so insane. So she knew. Right. She knew the whole time what right. was going Female on. Female dogs are unbelievable. I'm, it's not. Fantastic. I don't think it's so much with male dogs. And yeah. and you may out there, you know, yeah. have a story. But in our house, you know, Sophie was like that. If if you were upset, she'd come. She knew. She knew. Yeah. She could be in another room. She'd come flying in the room because she knew something. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. So all right, so everyone needs to get involved in this. Plus, everybody has yeah. a really good time doing it, right? Absolutely. Walk. We have a DJ. We have yeah. food, games, contests. Yeah. Yeah, and it's May... May 4th at Stanley Park from yep. 9 to 1. Yep. You can register there. You can go to Dave's website. You can register there. Yep. It's going to be on ABC40. They're a proud sponsor as well. So right. it's going to be on their website. You're going to see spots on the commercials. Right, and so you know what? Just uh, if someone wants to register for this, they can do it on our... Fa I saw it on our Facebook. On our Facebook, Actually, on, on our, our Facebook website. Page. Oh, you did? Yes, I'm very happy. <laughs> First time yes. this year? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they can do that. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Cookie. Thanks, guys. All right. So will you will you take that? Because now, can we? Uh, all right. So when we come back, Joe wants me to pause for a commercial because we have people paying a hundred thousand dollars for this spot that we have to run now. So we'll be back in just a minute. So I, I'm, I'm going to try and be serious. So I, I, uh, one of my manufacturers uh, said to me, you need to come out with a 95% uh, meat cat food uh, because many vets are now finally starting to recommend to their, their patients that uh, cats should be on canned food. And here's why the mainstay of your cat's diet should be uh, canned. Number one, a lot of cats don't get a lot of, uh, enough moisture. So a canned food obviously has way more moisture in it than uh, a dry food. Number two, cats are carnivores. Uh, they're unlike dogs. Their system is different. Unlike people, they are carnivores. So they need meat. They don't need carbs. So what we did, we came out with five flavors of a 95% uh, meat cat food. So let me tell you what that means by 95%. It means basically it's almost meat stuffed in the can. We can't call it all meat. The feds won't let us because there is vit a vitamin pack and there is water. So this is uh, beef and, and beef liver pate. The ingredients are beef, beef liver, beef broth, natural flavor, flaxseed, calcium, and then all the vitamins and minerals are in here. So what's really important about 
these foods are, if your cat is fat or if your cat has diabetes, it's just like with people, or if you want to pre help prevent your cat from getting diabetes, this is the kind of diet that your cat should be on because there's virtually no carbs. So you know how diabetes works. Same thing with people, same thing with dogs, and especially with cats. They don't need the carbs, right? And bad carbs, especially with, you know, with people and, and with dogs, you, turns to fat, turns to sugar, you're, you get overweight. So this is the coolest, this is just like the coolest thing because you ever do something and you say something and then, and then something happens where you, you're validated that what you're saying is correct. I was cruising the internet the other night and uh, looking for how to treat dogs and cats to prevent or to help if they have diabetes. We have a, a large number of customers who come in and their dogs and cats have diabetes. So probably as you know, I came out before with the 95% dog food, which is the same as the cat, and my big deal was... No, no paging, please! My big deal was uh, for your dog that no carbs, right? Same thing as that. Now, so as I'm cruising, and you should, I'll give you the link to do this. I'm cruising the internet looking up for best diets for cats, and I ran across an article by a veterinarian, Lisa Pearson. I emailed her and said, can I talk about your article on TV, and can I have a link from my website to your website? She emailed me back immediately and said, absolutely, please do. The whole article is about the evils, her opinion, the evils of dry cat food. And if you want, there's a, it's like a 20 page uh, thing if you print it all out. But the funniest part of the whole thing was, she says, if you fed your cat an exclusive canned diet, you would not even be reading this article. So I'm gonna give you a few, this is from, this is not from me, which is so cool, this is, this is from a vet. This is, uh, I receive many emails each week asking for food recommendations for diabetic cats. Answers, no dry foods, period, end of story. See the cat food composition chart and stay below 10% carbohydrate cal um, calories. Stay away from food with gravy they are high in carbohydrates. The same is true for most food with sauces. Higher protein, lower fat is also the goal. However, you will note that most commercial foods, this is, this is the big deal, folks, are low in protein and high in fat. Why? Because protein is expensive and fat is cheap. This is one of the many reasons why I make my own cat food. So I, I showed her our 95% cat food, you know, and she was like, this is, this is, a great diet for cats to be on. I just want to read you a few of the excerpts from, uh, from her articles. Diabetes is one of the most common feline uh, endo, endo, how do you pronounce this, Joe? Endo, endo, <laughs> endocrine diseases, and while we do not know all the causes of this complex disease, we do know that many diabetic cats cease needing insulin, have their insulin needs significantly decreased once once their dietary carbohydrate level is lowered to a more species appropriate level than food found in many commercial foods, especially dry food. This is a big deal. So she goes on, the next part of this, so you don't think that I'm making this up, and it really feel is obesity. And I would say that 60% of the people who come into my stores, their dogs and cats are obese. It's from all the treats. It's from too much dry food. Um, and the fact of the matter is, and, and I'm not defending anybody, if dry food manufacturers put the proper amounts of protein, they, they couldn't make a dry food because they couldn't hold the kibble together. That's the issue. You need something to hold the, the food together. I will tell you that, and, and we're going to be doing this, foods that use uh, chickpeas uh, 
can, they hold the food together and it has a much lower uh, glycemic index. And there were a couple of foods that came out like that. We did the Nutrisco one, much, much lower glycemic index than, than most of the other foods. I think, my humble opinion, that the future of higher end or better uh, pet food nutrition is going to be low, low glycemic index uh, foods, which is just much, much healthier. So when she's talking about obesity, she's talking about the carbohydrate level, uh, portion control, right? Duh. And um, if your cat is overweight, you need to understand that it's beyond the scope of a web page to explain to how to implement a safe weight loss program. But what she does say is switch to a canned diet. You know, en end of story. It's really, it's really, really easy. So this is a, a wonderful, and just so everyone, yeah, I'm almost done. Every once in a while you say, oh, she's just one vet. What does she know? She also put in some uh, quotes from recent studies. Uh, this one is by an, another vet, Dr. Deborah Zorin. High protein, low carb diets and low fiber diets are highly beneficial in the management of cats with diabetes. Also mentions obesity. You ready? Resulting in a reduction of greater than 50% in the amount of insulin required in eight of nine cats in one study. Uh, in one study, 68% of cats with diabetes fed a carbohydrate restricted canned diet lost the need for insulin. So I know some, most of you are saying, my cat doesn't have diabetes, great. If you feed the right diet, chances are your cat won't have diabetes. So please listen to this. You know, one of the options is our 95 uh, cat, and this sounds very goofy, but it is so cool that at a, such a reasonable price, we can offer, uh, and your vet will agree, I know it, we can offer a real health food for your cat and the 95 for the dog too. So with that, don't go away. Sandy and I will be back in just a moment. Well, we're back with uh, Dave and Killer Matt. Howdy. Thanks. <laughs> uh, One got so away. So, Matthew, <laughs> it's springtime. Yes. And springtime means? Koi. koi. Pond time. Right. Pond fish. Right, right. Okay, everyone ready? Today it is almost April. Yes. And it's By the time they see this, it'll be the middle of April. Middle of April. So it's a good 50 degrees. So now's the yeah. time to start getting your ponds up and, what and do we running. And how do you do that? Okay, first thing you want to do Yes. When you get it, of course, you're going to be turning back on your filters, getting yes. your filters back on, installing your UV sterilizer lights if you have them. And we're going to do a little biological cleaning. This is microbe lift. This is actually good stuff. Any debris that's fallen into your pond over the winter, dead leaves, things like that, it's breaking down and you have a lot of sludge, right. sediments, runoff in your pond. You do put you know what? What's that? Did you know municipalities use this? They sure do because this is a live this is bacteria. Real good stuff. So, mm -hmm. so they sell this to cities and towns when they want to clean out um, sewage treatment sewage lines, treat things yeah, like all, that. Any, right. Any, this is the real deal. Mm -hmm. This stuff is the real deal. What this does, this is a live bacteria. If you suffer from, con from occasional constipation, Patients, swig you a bottle need of that. to swig yes. a bottle of this. And you'll be you know, regular like that. that sludge right out of your phone. <laughs> Kidding. Don't, I don't want to get do sued. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's like, do, it's right. like, do not Look try this at home. Him. Yeah, God, I'm regular for a month now. Right. Um, all right, this right here is live bacteria. He loves us, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> this is live bacteria. The bacteria breaks down all the sludge and absorbs it out of the water. Yeah. It'll actually use this, not only get rid of the stuff on the bottom, the microparticles, it'll clear cloudiness, it'll clear off sediment, it'll actually kickstart the- Also good for after a hangover. Yeah, true. Sorry. No problem. It'll the, actually make the, the pond nice and safe. Get rid of the, the uh, cloudiness. Cloudiness, make the yes. pond safe, the happy, bring life yep. back to your pond. Yes. Okay. Next. Next. Ponzyme. This is also a cleaner, but this actually puts barley into the water. This little barley extract is also a biological. Holy cow, look at that dog. This is wow. actually a, um, a barley extract right here. This is going to actually help keep any algae that might start forming. This time of year, the sun is now getting brighter. 
Yep. And with any leftover sludge that can form early in the spring, early summer, you start getting a lot of algae. This helps prevent that naturally without putting any heavy chemicals in there or pesticides. Right. So let's just, this is serious. Mm -hmm. If you use that to get yourself, get system going, mm -hmm. you've, a, you've uh, set up your UV sterilizer, mm -hmm. which is an absolute necessity. It's I important. wouldn't have a pond without it. If you invested it. money in there, right. you want to see the fish And you throw in. some of this stuff in, mm -hmm. you pretty much have alleviated any chemicals that you have to put in right. all year round. You got it. Okay, your pond has been established. Yeah. It's circulated water. Yep. This actually is help kickstart these both of these together are kickstarting your biological cycle again yep. and they're help breaking down a lot of leftover waste. It's going to make a natural environment rather than throwing algicides and pesticides in there. This does it naturally, it does it safely. Okay. It does it safely. Yes. Now, do you start feeding your food yet? Yep, once you are above 50 degrees, when your water temperature is above 50 degrees, you're going to start feeding. Water but temperature. Water not temperature, air temperature, not ever temperature. Water temperature. So you might have a 70 degree day, April 1st. Um, don't go start feeding away. Make sure your water temperature is 80 because the te 80. blood temp. Well, I'm sorry, uh, above 50. Above 50. You got me on the it's 80. A good a thing bit. I'm on the show. Yes, he's on the ball. Okay, this right here, the t blood temperature of the fish is going to be the same as the water. They're cold-blooded animals. When the water temperature is low, their metabolism is slower. Right. So, when you're at a lower temperature, when you start 50 degrees, they're going to start requiring nutrients, but in small, easy, digestible amounts. This is a very, very, very light, easy to digest fish food that'll start kicking in their digestive tract again. Okay. Okay, so you feed this in the spring, and incidentally, in the fall, when the water temperature starts cooling down again, you switch back to this. this. So Got it's it. spring and fall diet. Once you are temperature stays steady above 70 to 65 to 70 degrees, it's a different diet. then you switch over to the high test food that they need to get their fat deposits on. Right. Okay, so start switching your, you can start feeding them now, but feed your spring and fall diet. Right. Start doing the spring and fall. So now, as far as fish, fish. We, we haven't stocked up with all our uh, fancy goldfish that Ed usually brings. Yep, up. we so have in a, a couple weeks. We'll have to have an Ed show. Okay, we're going to have an Ed show. Yes, we are going to have some of the funny talking fish right. again. But right. we've got started bringing in the koi, the starter stuff to get back in. Yep. As you can see, I'm going to give you a good. This is a good contrast in size and how big a koi actually can grow. See this little white yep. blue fish right here. Yep. This one here is about seven months old. About two inches long, cute little baby. Seven months? He's about seven months old, yep. This is a two-year-old koi right here. Look at that big one right there. Wow. They can go from that size to that size two within years. two years. So cost-wise, how much is he? This little guy right here is $3. And this guy? $75. <laughs> right. Plus supply and demand. Um, yes. Great way to get started. If those of you have not had koi or want to get some nice fish in your tank, we've got a whole tank loads of yeah, we baby koi a, over there. Yeah, yep. ton, tons of, so now again, because I forget this every year, the difference between a koi and a goldfish is whiskers? Whiskers, yep. If you That's look, the only difference? Well, um, the koi do get bigger, do get significantly larger, but if you look, the koi have whiskers and they've got bigger eyes. Whereas a goldfish, you can see right behind you. Well, is that a goldfish? That's a goldfish, yeah. That's a fancy goldfish, but yeah. he doesn't have whiskers. He has no whiskers and he's got smaller eyes. And the koi's got, I'm looking for they his got whiskers. Right on the front. See him? You can see the whiskers oh, right are, in the front. No, yeah. they're hard. They're hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you yeah, can yeah. see him right there. Yeah, He's yeah, just yeah. moving around quite a bit. Yep. And these guys in the back are, are all baby koi. You yeah, can see the whiskers. whiskers. Yep, they all have whiskers. So koi can live with goldfish, no they problem. They sure can. Yep, they sure can. They right. can actually make sure oh, they have space. Time, right? <laughs> well, time. folks, uh, uh, it was a pleasure being with you today. Hope you I hope you learned something about diabetes and obesity for your dogs and your cats. Mm hmm. And uh, don't go away. Uh, you can actually go away now because we're, 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 done. we're done. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>